go through them fast. Uh, so thermal sensing is a method uh, for non-contact measurement of surface temperature of a target. It could be canopy, it could be anything. Uh, different uh, tools uh, are common for doing thermal sensing. We could use infrared thermometers or thermal images, uh, thermal imagers. And uh, there are different platforms for, for doing that. Uh, like, like we could use satellite drones or do ground-based thermal sensing. I would like to call a thermal, uh, uh, infrared thermometer, a single pixel camera. It gives us an average temperature over uh, an area of a target. Uh, so in, uh, how we install it depends on the distance, depends on the field of view of the sensor. This is one of the uh, like commercially available uh, artists from Apogee. Uh, USDA are a team from uh, Bushland, Texas, uh, specifically Dr. Susan Shennessy and uh, her colleagues have been using IRTs and, so and weather sensors for radiation scheduling for a very long time. And recently they have also co combined IRTs with uh, RGB imagery and developed a computer vision system for a similar application. We've also been uh, using uh, uh, network wireless network of IRTs, solar and weather sensors uh, for uh, automatic irrigation scheduling, specifically in apple trees uh, for the past six, seven years. Uh, and this is something actually we are still uh, working on and we're working towards commercializing this. Uh, Another uh, way to do thermal sensing, as I mentioned, is thermal imaging. In thermal imaging, uh, we, instead of a, like a, a, sim, a, a single value uh, 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 for, for temperature, we can have a thermal, a thermal map and have uh, uh, like, a, we, we can have a number of uh, temperature values over an area. Okay, this is something that I would like to uh, like uh, expand a little bit more. We have thermal sensors or modules and thermal cameras. Most of us are familiar with thermal cameras. This is what we, we normally use. So what's the difference? A thermal sensor or module uh, is something that Harvard de developers usually use it. It's, it's like an electronic component that you, know, you use your, in your developments. Uh, currently, the highest resolution that is available in the market is 120 by 160 pixels uh, from uh, from Flare, and uh, it's relatively and and, the, and sensor modules uh, apparently they're relatively inexpensive, uh, but they don't uh, have any processing. They don't do usually any processing on board, so everything depends on the as I said the developer. And uh, it requires a significant exper level of expertise to, to, to be used. And uh, thermal cameras, currently we can even find uh, re high resolutions up to HD. Uh, the, they have a wide range, a range of uh, price, $500 is just for the, for the, for the cheapest uh, thermal camera, uh, which can be used mostly by hobbyists. And, uh, high, uh, and it could be like, uh, uh, there's no limit to how, how expensive it can be. And uh, they do usually high level on board image processing. Uh, uh, different software packages are available that can be used with, the, with these sensors. And um, anybody can use them. Anybody who you know, spends a little bit of time and you know, learn how to use them can use them. Another uh, point that I would like to make is that what we need for agriculture application is what's called radiometric thermal camera. Uh, so, uh, what's non-radiometric, uh, so the type of thermal cameras that are used in, in security, for example, industry, they uh, provide uh, the a false color image. The, you can see the difference between uh, temperatures, uh, but you don't know what the actual temperature is. In a radiometric uh, thermal camera, on the other hand, it would tell us what the temperature of the individual pixel is. 
Uh, as I mentioned, we've been working on developing low-cost imagers using thermal modular sensors that I just uh, described. Uh, so far, we've developed uh, field versions of uh, some, some field imagers uh, combining thermal and RGB. I will explain that. With user interface, also a, uh, a form of portable imager, again inexpensive which combines thermal and multispectral imagery. I'm just going to focus on uh, our field imager and this, uh, some of its applications so far. So uh, the field uh, imager, this is not the latest version. This is uh, what we used in our project and evaluated, you know, uh, like over a year before. Uh, it uses uh, radiometric lepton thermal module from flare systems uh, and also uh, uh, RGB module. Uh, precise, uh, a precise timer uh, turns uh, imager on and off at the specified times of day to save power. Those who have used field image, uh, field, uh, uh, have used uh, thermal cameras in the field, you know how uh, difficult it is to manage the power and keep them going in the field. Uh, so this was one of the challenges that we tried to resolve. Uh, and uh, so this, is, this imager has embedded data logging capability. Uh, that it, it, it saves images and uh, calculated the results. Uh, what weatherproof uh, apparently uh, appropriate for, for our field uh, you know, applications to survive you know, uh, growing season. And uh, it would also allow for continuous uh, monitoring and measurement in the field, take images, you know, every once in a while. And uh, one other thing that we added to this was communication with wirelessly with an Atmos 41 microclimate unit. Uh, this is uh, along and all in one uh, weather station from Meter Group. And uh, the cost of a prototype was about $400. Uh, so, what the imager does is uh, take in thermal and RGB images of the same target and uh, processing it. Uh, I will explain the image processing algorithm later, but uh, to communicate with uh, and uh, retrieve the data from the, from the imager, uh, there are different ways we could connect. Uh, we, we could retrieve data wirelessly or connect directly to the imager. And uh, the thermal images are recorded in binary format, which is a standard and uh, can be even analyzed in a math lab or any software that can, uh, you know, open binary. And the image processing algorithm. So I said, I mentioned that we have uh, thermal and RGB images. So the algorithm uh, resizes and overlaps RGB and thermal images. They, they don't have the same uh, resolution. So this is required. And then and read thermal raw binary data, converts them to temperature, and applies uh, calibration coefficients. So uh, thermal sensors like IRTs apparently need calibration. And uh, identifies the target in RGB image. This is something that we, we tell the imager what target is of our interest. It's canopy, it's, fruit, uh, it's leaves, it's fruit, it's uh, what? and creates a mask. Uh, and using that mask removes the background from thermal image using the, uh, yeah, and it removes the background from the thermal image. And at the end, it calculates temperature of the target uh, with some uh, like minor statistical analysis, like giving us average maximum and mean. Uh, so, uh, and then we used our, this field imager in a number of applications in the field. One of these applications was uh, using it to monitor uh, crop water stress. So we wanted to see, actually, see if, uh, how good it was and if we could use it for that purpose. So, uh, the, the, the objective of the project that we did this as part of it was comparing MISA and LISA irrigation methods based on canopy temperature. Okay. So this was a good opportunity. So we mounted two uh, of our field imagers on a center pivot machine in a mean, mean field uh, in center of Washington. And we collected uh, you know, data during uh, you know, an entire growing season. 
These are some sample images, RGB top and terminal at the bottom. So image processing, this is what it did here. Uh, it identified canopy leaves, separated soil background from leaves, and then calculated the average temperature of the leaves. Uh, actually, what we did was a little bit more than that, and we also tried to remove the shaded leaves. This is not my area of expertise, but, but some say that shaded leaves don't transpire like you know, sunlit leaves do. So we wanted to see if we could do that, and we, we tried that as well. Potentially, if this data, if we combine this data with microclimate, we can calculate the crop water stress index and transpiration in real time. And it can also be potentially used for uh, generating dynamic prescription maps, I imagine. These are, again, sample processed uh, images. Uh, from the left, RGB thermal, and then uh, a, masked ter a masked thermal image. And you can see that it works, at, uh, you know, when we have different uh, canopy coverage percentages. Yeah. Another application was uh, to see if we could use the thermal imager for monitoring apple skin temperature, apple sunburn damages, you know, the apple industry in a huge amount every year. So, and they don't have any tools to actually monitor it and activate their uh, uh, cooling systems. So yeah, so we want to see if we could use it. And it's, I, I, I probably I don't need to mention how difficult it's gonna be if you want to use, say, IRT for, for such a purpose. So again, we installed thermal RGB images uh, and we use them to collect field data in, in uh, green and red apples in Prosser, Washington. So again, in these images, you can see that uh, we have RGB, thermal, and then a mask, and then the background is removed from uh, the thermal image. And we only have uh, a, an apple to, you know, to, to process. Another project which is also ongoing is uh, we want to see if we could use uh, surface temperature as a surrogate for wetness. So cherry cracking, again, is a source of, uh, you know, loss, fruit loss in, in the cherry industry. We, again, we, we used uh, imagers uh, and we installed them in, you know, ch in, a ch in uh, cherry orchards to, to collect, uh, to collect surface temperature, uh, to, co to collect, uh, like, uh, yeah, to collect surface temperature data and see if we can relate it to wetness. Again, uh, similar images. Uh, we can see the change in the pattern after, before and after, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the pattern in the thermal image after rain. And what we did was uh, separating, uh, you know, uh, the cherries from the, rest, uh, from the background and uh, doing, uh, calculating the temperature. So uh, these, are, these were some of the applications, that some of uh, the areas that we have tested. So monitoring of fruit surface uh, characteristics like temperature and wetness. This is, our, our, our project proved that it was possible. It uh, could, uh, so, so a, 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 a thermal imaging based sensor like this can be used for prevention of fruit heat damage, sunburn, if you use it for monitoring and activating, you know, actuating monitoring systems. And prevention of fruit cracking, again, if you use it as a monitoring tool and then uh, in relation with a, a control system. Fruit surface temperature monitoring in storage rooms, that's another application. Crop transpiration and water status is one of the evident, you know, applications. Okay. Thank you. And uh, this is my last slide. And uh, tree fruit frost monitoring and actuation of management tools, again, as I mentioned. Pest and disease monitoring and prediction, these are just general applications of thermal sensing. But having a tool like this, monitoring of greenhouse environments, uh, imagine, when I say monitoring, I'm talking about here continuous monitoring and high throughput uh, phenotyping, which was already uh, mentioned. Thank you so much for your time.